Okay, now let's look at the conveyance in problem number seven on page 73. So let's read through it together. Adam owns a 100% mineral interest, and I'm going to assume from this point on, if they don't tell me otherwise, the um, Adam is going to own 100% of the mineral. So Adam owns 100% of the mineral, okay, and Adam grants to B. A one eighth interest produced and saved. That's the language we know means produced and saved equal a royalty interest. So A out of his 100% mineral interest is conveyed to B one eighth non participating royalty interest. And all that's saying is A is saying, okay, if ever I get an oil and gas lease, B, and that lease gives me a royalty payment, I'm going to deduct from my payment and pay you one-eighth of that royalty payment. And that is under Section 6 of uh, sorry, January 2nd, 1960. So this is a date-sensitive problem. Okay, then A leases to Big Oil and retains a 3 sixteenths override under a standard lease on February 9th, 1960. Okay, A then conveys to C a one-eighth interest, but is it royalty or is it minerals? And so you look at it, it says one-eighth interest in oil gas in, on, and under section six, subject to existing leases or conveyances, and that was on July 10th, 1960. Okay, so that's our fact pattern. Now, the question is, we they want you to set out the party's interest. So, the easiest part of this problem is the working interest. Just keep in mind, before A leases, before A leases, if they want to drill a well on their own property, they're going to have to pay 100% of the costs associated with that well. Once a, so they own a 100% working interest before there is a lease. But what the lease says is the lessee saying, give me your 100% interest, A, and I'll pay all the bills, and I'll give you a percent of the production, a percent of the royalty. So we know that um, A has now leased to Big Oil, and therefore Big Oil owns 100% of the working interest. Okay, so that means A owns 0%, B owns 0%, and C, even though they eventually acquired a mineral interest because they took subject to the lease, they also have a 0% interest at this point. And they will continue to have a 0% working interest. So now we want to look at the net revenue interest. And as I said before, this is like when you had your first job and you thought you were going to get so much an hour and you looked at your check and they had deducted all the taxes from it. The net revenue interest says what the oil and gas company is going to profit, what the royalty owners are going to profit after all the bills have been paid. So for A, A is going to get this 3 sixteenths royalty. And A doesn't have to pay any bills. That's why she gave the working interest to B, to BO. So A is going to get this 3 sixteenths net revenue interest, or 3 sixteenths royalty interest. Okay. But remember, they gave 1 eighth to B. They told B, if ever we get an oil and gas lease, we're going to give you 1 eighth of that interest. Okay. So at this point, 3 sixteenths minus 1 eighth is going to be a point 0 0.0625. That is just 0.1875 minus 0.125572. So that's a point oh six two five. That's where they stand now. But remember, we're not finished with this equation. B never did acquire a mineral interest. He only acquired this one-eighth non-participating royalty interest. 
So we know that B is going to get this 1 8 non-participating world here. B, if B gives, if B owns 100% of the working interest, and they have to pay to A a 3 16 3 16 just as a refresher, 3 divided by 16, a 3 16 interest is going to be a 0.1875. So they're going to have to deduct from their 100% a 0.1875. And that leaves them with a 0.8125. Another way to look at this is if they give to A a 3 16 they get the remaining 13 16 equals 16 16 or 1. So they are getting the remaining 13 16 as their net revenue interest. And if we want to turn this into a decimal, it's a 0.8125. Now, let's look at C's interest. C now has acquired a 1 8, a 1 8 mineral interest. Okay, so now C owns a 1 8 mineral interest. Okay. And that means that A retained the remaining 7 8 mineral interest. And 7 divided by 8 equal a 0.875. So we're going to have to we're going to have to then multiply this 0.0625. Remember that we got here? We're going to have to multiply that times this 7 8 or this 0.875. And if we do that, we're going to have 0.065 times, sorry, times the 0.875. And that is going to be the decimal that we get for A. It's in 0546875 net revenue interest. Or a point zero five four six eight seven five net revenue interest. That's what A is going to get. Okay. B is going to get this 0.125 net revenue interest. Big Oil is going to get their 1316 or their 8125. And then C is going to take the remaining 1/8, but again, she took subject to that conveyance to B. So her 3/16 minus 1/8 for this 0.0625, we're going to multiply hers times. A 0.125. So you see, A has the 7 8 mineral interest and C has the 1 8 mineral interest, but because C took subject to existing burdens, that is the 3 16 from the lease and the 1 8 that was conveyed to B, now we're going to have to multiply this 1 8 times the, point, um, the 0 0.0625. So 1 8 times 0 0.0625 times 0 0.06625. And that's going to be an interest of 0 0.0078125 for C. 0 0.0078125 net revenue interest. Okay, so to be crystal clear about it, let me just erase what I have here. Now that you know how we got it, A's net revenue interest is going to be 0 0.054687. B's net revenue interest is going to be 0.125. B's net revenue interest is going to be 0.0875. And C's net revenue interest is going to be 
BO's net revenue interest is going to be 1316 and C's net revenue interest is going to be 0.0078125. And those are the interests of the parties. Stay tuned for number eight.